The White House announced last week that they're moving to ban flavored e-cigarettes in the coming months to show that the administration is taking the issue of youth vaping seriously. And regardless of your feelings on vape, this is a very misguided move from the Trump administration that, believe it or not, could hurt his chances of re-election. But even worse, I have to sit here and defend vape now. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, commie. First, here's your hard pill to swallow. If you vape, you're probably cringe. Now, not everyone who vapes is cringe, but if you're cringe, you probably also vape. And so that's just something that we need to think about in the future moving forward. And so, you know, if you're using vape as an alternative to cigarettes, maybe you just enjoy it, more power to you. But if you're pulling up to red lights, blowing epic clouds to the people in the lane next to you to show them how sick you are, if you're posting Snapchat stories of you blowing clouds in sync with the music you're listening to, you're cringe and you need to be institutionalized. So now that we understand each other, we'll talk about the ban, why it's misguided, why banning things is usually dumb and how this could actually hurt him in 2020 more than you would think. And so basically, Data has come out that shows more than a quarter of high school students have used e-cigarettes in the last 30 days, which is up 21% from 2018. And then we've also seen outbreaks of respiratory illness linked to vaping in more than 30 states throughout the country that's caused about 450 people to fall ill and six people to die. So Trump came out and said at a press conference, quote, people are dying with vaping, so we're looking at it very closely. And so really what this boils down to is a misguided reactive agenda that is set to address what frankly is a non-issue. You've got over 9 million adults in the United States that regularly vape, and of that you've supposedly got 450 people ill and six people dead. That's about five one hundred thousandths of one percent are falling ill and about seven ten millionths of one percent dying. That's decidedly a non-issue. But something that you have to remember about President Trump is at the end of the day, you know, he's a good guy. He's a strong leader. He's been a net positive on the country thus far. But at the end of the day, he's still a boomer. President Trump is still a baby boomer. And what that means is that he's going to be particularly sensitive to things that he just doesn't understand and that will typically award the country a knee-jerk prescription for going about solving the problem. We've seen this with him linking mass shootings to violent video games. We're seeing this now with Trump reacting to the non-issue of vape-related illness and death by organizing a ban on the sale of flavored e-cigarettes. And this is just something that we're going to have to expect because Trump is a really sharp guy, obviously very smart. And much of that is thanks to his judgment. He hasn't read the classic conservative literature. He's not versed in the writings of William F. Buckley or Russell Kirk. I mean, this is the guy that brags about writing more books than he's read. And that's not to say anything bad about President Trump. This is just to say that he's influenced primarily by his judgment and his instincts. And while those have served him quite well for his entire life, they're going to fall victim to bias or misinformation when dealing with issues that are practically brand new in our society, such as violence in video games or vaping. And the younger generations have sort of epigenetically adapted to these things, I guess you would say, because we grew up with them, whereas older generations don't really get it. Not to embody the angsty youth who feels the older people just don't get it, but that's a pattern for every generation. Every generation introduces new things into the culture, and the previous generation typically has a hard time understanding these things. I think everyone goes through that, you know, when you're young, you're being told by parents and grandparents like, oh, when I was your age, we had this, this, and this, and it was so much better, just stuff like that. And then when you're older, you have kids, you look at what they're growing up with, and you're like, what the hell is this? What the hell is a Peppa Pig? And that sort of generational divide is a substantial component of what we're seeing here, I think. And so moreover, with these particular cases, it wasn't just, oh, well, a guy walked into a store, he bought a mango jewel pod, and then he dropped dead, like it's a campfire story or something. No, these particular instances largely involved illicit street cannabis, THC, other oils that were obtained on the black market. And so to blame the broad act of vaping as the exclusive cause of these instances would be similar to blaming the broad act of drinking for some guy who found a case of unrecognizable beer under a bridge and then proceeded to just drink it. And so if the Trump administration wants to address the issue, they're moving in the wrong direction. The correct direction would be to focus on the health effects of the unregulated THC, cannabis and marijuana markets, perhaps begin an effort to reclassify and regulate these products as something other than Schedule One substances at the federal level. But of course, that's not what we're hearing about. And because of that, this ban truly fascinates me, especially because of how poorly this is going to go for President Trump from the perspective of grand political strategy, 4D chess, whatever you want to call it. 
And so here, you know, we've got a few hundred people sick from vaping. We already talked about the actual cause, but let's just call it vaping for the sake of argument. And you've got six people dead. And so now we're going to have to address this with policy because these products are attracting children and we don't want children to get sick and die. Well, on the topic of death in this country, the causes of it have remained fairly consistent over the last several years. And 74% of all deaths in this country are caused by just 10 things. The leading cause of death in this country, accounting for almost 25% of all deaths each year, is heart disease. In 2017, about 650,000 people died from heart disease. And we also know that 80% of cardiovascular disease, including heart disease, is preventable. Have we heard anything about cutting subsidies for processed food, cutting subsidies for corn? Maybe let the market regulate the price of that? I don't think so. Evidently, big corn has too strong a grip on Washington. What about cancer, specifically lung cancer, which kills about 143,000 people each year? And smoking is linked to between 80 and 90% of those cases. Are we banning cigarettes? No, but I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put a label on them that says, warning, these are bad. And this isn't me saying, well, oh, well, we shouldn't ban flavored e-cigarettes, but we should ban all these other things. No, no, no. I'm saying that if the idea is to go after what's actually harming people, what's actually killing people in this country, we've got some pretty clear examples of things that are killing hundreds of thousands of people every year, and no one really talks about it because it's just normal at this point. It's just accepted within the culture. E-cigarettes are new. They're not yet perceived as granted within the culture, and because of that, they've got a target on their back. The biggest problem with vape, really is how it affects the kids. Okay, yes. And that's basically what the whole point is here because they're saying, well, oh wow, look how bad it is. And oh wow, look how many kids are using it. We're gonna have to step in and do something about it. We saw First Lady Melania come out and she says, you know, she's deeply concerned about the growing epidemic of e-cigarette use in our children and that we need to do all we can to protect the public from tobacco related disease and death and prevent e-cigarettes from becoming an on-ramp to nicotine addiction for a generation of youth. And that's true. But is the best thing we can do to solve that problem ban flavored e-cigarettes right before an election? Oh, well, John, you're prioritizing the election over the kids. Like, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. We'll lose the election because we pissed off millions of voters in Trump states by banning things that aren't even the cause of the problem in the first place. And then we can watch our kids starve or be beaten to death because of socialism and open borders. Yeah, good job. Good plan. Very high IQ. But the problem here is that there's a ton of evidence that suggests that the flavors of vape are one of the biggest draws for adolescents to start using them. And we've also got a ton of evidence that shows how these products have helped adult smokers stop using tobacco products, which I believe was the original intention of these products. But the other side of that coin is we've also got evidence that shows the amount of teens using tobacco products have spiked because of vape products. The teens who vape are about four times more likely to try cigarettes, three times more likely to be using cigarettes. So this is a double-edged sword. And anyone watching currently in high school or even middle school knows everyone is vaping. There was even a joke at my school like, hey, who put toilets in the vape room? Because everyone would just go in there and vape. I think it's so stupid. I think for young people who have no vices to just decide to become addicted to nicotine is just idiotic. I don't understand how these people, these young, healthy people can justify to themselves breathing in all these chemicals they don't even know about into their lungs. It's like, it's one thing if you're doing it as an alternative to cigarettes, but these kids largely aren't. And now they're 15, 16 years old, they have a nicotine addiction just for craps and laughs. And sure, being addicted to nicotine isn't exactly the end of the world if you know it's being fulfilled through these vape products rather than cigarettes. But any addiction that you have, whether it be to nicotine, pornography, sugar, whatever, it makes you a slave to your impulses. You are literally rewiring your own neurochemistry. You are compromising your brain's reward system. Don't do that. Don't become addicted to dopamine. You're going to go from, oh, I like this to, oh, I want this to, oh, I need this, or literally I cannot function optimally very quickly, much faster than you would expect, actually. But anyways, as far as banning these flavored e-cigarettes goes, banning things almost invariably creates a black market for those things. And obviously, you know, that's not necessarily to say that we shouldn't ban things because people are going to get them anyway, because some things we do want banned. And the hardcore libertarians will say, uh, you think I need the government to protect me from myself? The black market's always going to exist. Here's the thing. With every market, you're going to have a relatively normal distribution of demand, meaning that there's going to be a hierarchy of the desire that people have for the thing in question. And as a result of that, you'll have a hierarchy of the lengths to which they will go to obtain that thing. I'm not of the opinion that meth should be legal for recreational purposes. And sure, it's still possible to get in this country, but ask yourself, if you wanted to obtain meth right now, how long do you think it would take you to do so? Do you even know how to begin the acquisition process? It would probably be a lot more difficult now than if you were to go to a convenience store and just, yeah, I'd like one meth, please. And if you actually believe that banning things doesn't make them more difficult to access, you're just wrong. And to the people I just triggered, no, it's not the same for banning guns because banning guns is explicitly not constitutionally valid and also guns are generally not disposable. 
meaning you've got hundreds of millions in circulation in this country. They're not going anywhere. Whereas to use something like meth, every time you use it, by definition, you're disposing of it. You're reducing the supply of it. And such is not the case for guns. You can use a gun without reducing the supply of guns. But the problem with banning these flavored e-cigarettes and creating a black market in the process, an unregulated black market, that was the whole problem in the first place, as we discussed, was the people who became ill or died were consuming unregulated THC, cannabis, and marijuana products. And so if you just ban a product as popular and as widely used as flavored e-cigarettes, you're going to force a substantial proportion of the people to the black market. Not all of them, but when you're dealing with 9 million people, even 1% is a lot of people. And that's probably not optimal. It's also not difficult to imagine a scenario where many adults who use these products to quit cigarettes just turn back to cigarettes. But the bottom line is that it's going to make a lot of people mad. And that actually puts his upcoming election in jeopardy. Judging by the last election and the general trajectory of voting in this country, 2020 is going to be decided effectively by voters in 12 states at the most. And those states would be Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Georgia, Minnesota, New Hampshire, Maine, Arizona, and Nevada. And based on the most recently available data funded by the FDA, 4.5 1.15 million adults in these states use e-cigarettes. In 2016, 61.4% of the voting age population voted, and if that figure holds true in 2020, it means that roughly 2.55 million adults who vape will be voting in those states, those key states. Trump won Michigan in 2016 by under 11,000 votes. Michigan's got 422,000 adult vapors. He won Florida by about 113,000 votes. Florida's got over 904,000 vapors. Wisconsin, where he won by about 23,000 votes, they've got over 267,000 vapors. Minnesota, where Clinton won, by about 45,000 votes. They've got over 172,000 vapors. Pennsylvania, where Trump won by about 44,000 votes. They've got over 450,000 vapors. And you might be thinking, who cares? Do you really think they care that much? Well, I'll share with you what alarmed me about all this, which is a figure that comes to us from research conducted by the Americans for Tax Reform published in October of 2016, just five months after the Obama administration announced their own timeline for a de facto e-cigarette ban. And they found that four out of five adult vapors vote moving issue was where a politician stood on the issue of taxing, regulating, and banning e-cigarettes. So it's not only that there's a significant amount of vapors in key states, it's that a significant proportion of them vote based on how the candidates handle vape related issues because that's that's a thing now, I guess. I mean, it's a wedge issue now for these people. It's a wedge issue. And neglecting the influence they have is a very irresponsible thing to do. Ron Johnson, a Republican senator from Wisconsin, received 70,000 more votes in that state than Trump did in 2016, according to him, largely because he endorsed vaping as a right for adults in Wisconsin. We saw the former attorney general of Indiana fail to place first or even second in a Republican congressional primary in 2016 after he pushed tax hikes on e-cigarettes. We saw Democrat Representative Liz Thompson she was kicked out of office by voters in 2014 after pushing new taxes on the products. I mean, the point here is that Trump, an incumbent president, soon to be running for re-election as a Republican, is in the process of banning something that hundreds of thousands of people in states that he needs to win use consistently. And he will, they will live and die by their ability to access that unimpeded. And then the fact that conservatives tend to not want the government involved in most things as a general rule. Yeah, I made a case for the fact that some things should be banned, but as I stated, banning meth is different than banning flavored e-cigarettes, categorically. And if you don't see that, I don't know what to tell you at this point. But this is something that Trump can't afford to ignore because a lot of his base is already disappointed about immigration. They're disappointed about uh, banning bump stocks, you know, sprinkling some red flag laws in there. And now he's talking about involving the government in more of what has literally become a day-to-day -day part of the lives of millions of Americans. We need to criticize him. So many conservatives fail to understand the difference between criticizing Trump because you want him to succeed and criticizing Trump because you want him to fail. We need to criticize him. There is a huge difference. I am so sick of reading the you betrayed President Trump anytime anyone criticizes him. No, that's not what this is about. We criticize him because we want him to do better. And he listens to his base. He listens to Fox News. When people call him out on things, he listens. His reputation with his supporters is a very important thing to him. It's one of the largest tributaries of his ego. And because of that, it's our obligation to let him know when he's doing something wrong. And in this case, with banning flavored e-cigarettes, there's nothing for him to gain from it, but there's a whole lot that he can lose from it, and we can't risk it with this election. I mean, you've watched the same debates that I've watched. You know just as well as I know that if we lose in 2020, the agenda is socialism and open borders, and because the consequences are so great, we can't afford to take any chances. Hey guys, fancy meeting you here. Glad you stuck around. You know, you could leave a thumbs up on the video. I'm assuming you liked it because you stuck around until the end. Presumably you enjoyed it. You could also leave a comment. Let me know how much you enjoyed it. 
and you can subscribe to the channel so that you can see more videos in the future that you will likely enjoy. But until then, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Pow! Jesus bobblehead. Everyone's always like, why do you hit the Jesus bobblehead? So it bobbles, obviously.